Hello guys, this is Miss Nicel Sohento once again and welcome to the world of literature. Now today's topic is about romantic period or romanticism with our two popular authors for that time, Mary Shelley and Victor Hugo with their masterpieces. So, Romanticism is an attitude or intellectual orientation that characterized many works of literature, painting, music, architecture, criticism, and historiography in Western civilization over a period from the late 18th to the mid-19th century. During the Romantic period, the novel grew in popularity and became one of the major sources of entertainment for middle-class citizens authors began to tailor their writing to appeal to this audience. During the second half of the 18th century, Gothic fiction began to increase in popularity in Great Britain. The Gothic novel combines the intense emotions of terror, anguish, fear, and even love. Coleridge and Byron both contributed works to this canon. But John William Polidori's The Vampire and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein stand out as two of the generous, most enduring pieces. The only daughter of William Godwin and Mary Wollstonecraft, she met the young poet Percy Shelley and eloped with him to France in July 1814. After her husband's death, she returned to England and devoted herself to publicizing Shelley's writings and to educating their only surviving son, Percy Florence Shelley. She published her late husband's posthumous poems and she also edited his poetical works with long and invaluable notes and his prose works. Her journal is a rich source of Shelley biography and her letters are an indispensable adjunct. Mary Shelley's best known book is Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus, a text that is part Gothic novel and part philosophical novel. It is also often considered as an early example of science fiction. It narrates the dreadful consequences that arise after a scientist has artificially created a human being. Now let's all check out the literary elements being used in this Frankenstein novel by Mary Shelley. First, we have the theme. So a part of the theme is creation. Okay, because the story shows how Victor creates a monster and instills life in it after gaining scientific knowledge of life. His ambition of creating life and emulating his own creation fails. We also have isolation. Although several characters are trying to align themselves with one another, for instance, Robert Walton with his sister through letters and Victor Frankenstein with his family, they feel quite isolated from the world. Next, we also have crossing boundaries. Okay, Mary Shelley has very beautifully woven idea of the crossing limits in this novel. Through Victor Frankenstein, she explains that humans have certain limits despite grand ambitions. Last but not the least, the dangerous knowledge. This ruthless pursuit of knowledge of the light proves dangerous as Victor's act of creation eventually results in the destruction of everyone dear to him. Okay, next, we have the characterization. So Mary Shelley largely uses more direct characterization in Frankenstein to describe characters' physical and emotional states as well as the setting and the scenery of the novel. For the setting and context, it is in early 19th century, of course the place is Europe. For the tone and mood, okay, because the horrific events of the story are conveyed as retrospection the tone oscillates between remorse or anger on the part of the narrator and suspense on the part of the reader for not having total knowledge of the events that will unfold in spite of the narrator foreshadowing them summary of the plot 
Dr. Frankenstein is a brilliant scientist who is obsessed with the idea of gaining control over life and death. Refusing the limits of contemporary science, he carries out his research alone until he eventually succeeds in bringing to life a monster. However, even Frankenstein is frightened when he sees the fruit of his insane fantasy. The monster escapes from the laboratory and appears sometime later in the Swiss Alps, where he is rejected by all the men that he encountered. His anger towards all mankind builds up leading to a tragic climax in his killing of Frankenstein's best friend, his little brother, and his wife. The monster takes refuge at the North Pole knowing that only there, in a place of total desolation, he will kill no more. Dr. Frankenstein follows him, intending to kill his creation, but it is the doctor himself who is mortally wounded by the monster. He accuses Dr. Frankenstein and the rest of mankind of blocking all compassion. The story ends with the monster being borne away on an ice craft in the Arctic Sea. Influence in the Literature So Mary Shelley conceived her creature at the height of the literary and philosophical period called Romanticism. The forces that marked this period were the many changes that were being carried out such as political, which is the French and the American revolutions, economic from rural to urban economy and the beginnings of the industrial revolution, scientific, the discoveries in medicine, neurology, electricity and chemistry, and social, which is the growing importance of the education of the masses. Now for the moral of this novel, so one moral lesson in Frankenstein is that people need to belong and feel connected to others to survive. Another is that humans must carefully consider the cost of scientific progress. So much for Mary Shelley. So now let's move on to Victor Hugo and his renowned literary work, which is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. So let's check this out. Victor Hugo was a French poet and novelist who, after training as a lawyer, embarked on the literary career. He became one of the most important French romantic poets, novelists, and dramatists of his time, having assembled a massive body of work while living in Paris, Brussels, and the Channel Islands. It was his poetry that first earned him fame in the literary world, and later his novels and plays brought him recognition. Now, in 1831, he published one of his most enduring works, which is the Notre Dame de Paris or the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Set in the medieval period, the novel presents a harsh criticism of the society that degrades and shuns the hunchback Quasimodo. This was Hugo's most celebrated work to date and paved the way for his subsequent political writing. The novel Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo is primarily concerned with the themes of social strife, revolution, and prejudice. If you read the novel or somehow watch the movie, it clearly shows the class differences during that time, and Hugo was concerned about it. Determinism also dominates in these novels, and he also suggested that everyone should exercise free will to retain morality. Now, for the characterization, Victor Hugo uses complex characters in the novel. He does this by switching up the action or the roles of the characters, either from good to bad or the opposite. Setting and context, of course, it is in Paris, France, specifically the Notre Dame Cathedral. For tone and mood, it is melodramatically somber. Summary of the plot. In 15th century Paris, Clopin the Puppeteer tells the story of Quasimodo, the misshapen but gentle souled bell ringer of Notre Dame, who was nearly killed as a baby by Claude Frullo, the Minister of Justice. But Frullo was forced by the Archdeacon of the Notre Dame to raise Quasimodo as his own. Now, a young man, Quasimodo, is hidden from the world by Frullo in the bell tower of Cathedral. But during the Festival of Fools, Quasimodo cheered on by his gargoyle friends, Victor, Hugo, and Laverne, 
and decides to take part in the festivities where he meets the lovely gypsy girl named Esmeralda and the handsome soldier Phoebus. The three of them find themselves ranged against Frullo's cruelty and his attempts to destroy the home of the gypsies, the court of miracles, and so Quasimodo must desperately defend both Esmeralda and the very cathedral of the Notre Dame. Now, for the influence in the literature, Hugo wrote much of the Hunchback of Notre Dame during the July 1830 revolution, a political event that had a great impact on him and on the novel. The 1830 revolution excited Hugo as he hoped to witness a broader sense of liberty and democracy in France. Yet much of the novel is also influenced by the medieval politics and church of the 15th century. Hugo wanted to depict what daily life would have looked like for all the different social classes of Paris in that era. So he gives views from a wide variety of characters, from truants to kings, in order to capture a diffused society. Now for the moral, one of the lessons to learn would be that of not judging by appearances. So Quasimodo has been abandoned by his mother just because this has been born in an ugly twisted body but that says nothing about his heart or his soul so that's the end of my discussion thank you for bearing with me and keep safe guys bye